Hey Sainers, welcome back to the Saints TV YouTube channel. Welcome back to Saints TV Weekly, where you get all your Saints news every Monday. Um, and there's some very good news this week, Sainers. As you know, I've got the scarf on. I thought after yesterday, after that third and fourth quarter performance, I couldn't not wear the scarf. I'm pretty low key with the Saints colors in these videos, but today I thought I've got to get it on because that was absolutely amazing. Um, how good was it, by the way, waking up in the morning and then watching highlights or the replay again or just seeing the score and seeing the turnaround? 64 to 0 from 10 minutes left in the third to a minute to go in the fourth. Unbelievable turnaround from our boys, and that gets us to 2 and 1. And now I think we're just percentage out of the 8, playing Hawthorne at the G on Sunday. So another winnable game there. But let's get more into, into yesterday's game. Honestly, it, it, it felt like when we were on top, the crowd was about 50,000. I feel like when we're on a roll, the Saints fans are, are louder than any other supporter base. And that was perfectly uh, you know, documented yesterday. 31,000 um, turned up. Not the biggest Maddie's match crowd. But when we got on a roll midway through that third term to you know all of the fourth term, it was just electric. And Max King, again basically just dominates one quarter and, and that's enough to get us over the line. Um, Brad Crouch wins the Ian Stewart medal for a brilliant performance, probably his best game as a Saner. Gresham gets 32, another game under his belt, uh, back from injury. Membry kick three, Butler kick two. Ben Long came on as the emergency sub after Jack Higgins was subbed off with concussion. So he's the only downside of this game is he'll miss the next game 12 days out. Uh, Marshall kicked two resting forward while Paddy Ryder made a great return and didn't do too much around the ground, but uh, his tap work in the middle of the ground was instrumental in, in, in our third and fourth term domination. Backline stood tall. Mason Wood stood out. It was just a... Seb Ross even had a great game, one of his best games in years. Um, Sinclair in the middle again. It was just amazing. So just to, to quickly summarize, because obviously I've got my review video out and my player rating, so you get all the info on the game there. The final score was St. Kilda 18-9-117 to Richmond 13-6-84. And that was, you know, off the back of being down 53-78. to 78. So we were 25 points down with about 15 minutes to go in the third term. Brad Crouch kicks a goal. We go within 19. And then from that point on, everything changed. So I don't know really what clicked, but we looked like we were fitter. We ran harder. Um, and obviously, when you've got someone like Max King in the form that he's in up forward, you kick it to King in and shit happens. And that's exactly what happened yesterday. We kicked it to the positions that benefited him, not just on his head, but, you know, the form there was in yesterday, he would have marked anything. So just an all-round brilliant performance, a confidence-boosting performance. And as I said last week, we backed up what we needed to do. We got, went to Perth, got the win, ugly, but we got the win. And then we came back on the fast stick and we actually looked fast. I was a bit worried we were a bit too tall and we were relying too much on our talls. But in the end, that was the difference. Jack Hayes kicks a goal. Ron Marshall kicks a couple. Max King kicks four. Tim Membry kicks three. It worked. You know, it worked. And our back line stood tall with Dugues back and, and Battle and Cal Wilkie kicking his first goal in his career after his 66 consecutive games since debut as a Saner. So that's the game in a nutshell. If you want to hear more about it, my review's out, my player ratings is out. So I'll put the links at the end of this video and you'll be able to watch those as well. On top of the really good news, beating the Tigers, uh, Sandringham played, I think it was a Trevor Barker Oval yesterday and they took on the Tigers. Um... And they bounce back with a big 54-point win. So this actually makes it very hard for selection this week because there were some really decent performances. You know, Mitch Owens, I heard, was very good in the way he kicked two goals and finished with 19 disposals. Darryl Joyce was very good, apparently. 19 disposals, six marks. Tom Heimel, 12 disposals, four marks. Tom Campbell had 40 hitouts and kicked two goals, um, as well as 16 disposals around the ground, which is very impressive. Win Hager was quite impressive. Um, I think the only downside was that Cooper Sharman suffered a corky. And Jaron Geary, I think he went through concussion protocols as well. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to pull up in the next couple of weeks. But for us to, in the seniors, do what we did, and then to see Sandringham do the same to the Richmond uh, VFL team is, is amazing signs. Because I always believe that if you've got a good VFL team, it usually translates pretty well to on-field performances in the AFL. You look at Casey... 
uh, for Melbourne. We played them last week, got done by 83 points, and Melbourne are flying as well. Same thing for us yesterday. We got a very similar performance from the VFL team with the AFL team. So there's a good alignment there, and it was great to see the boys get a win there um, and you know get games into Ryan Burns. Bytel had 19 and, and four tackles as well and dominated in the midfield. Um, as well as Winhager, like I just mentioned. So really good young performances there, um, and that's going to make it difficult for you know selection. We've got Nasai Wangani Malira, who played in the seniors. Is he one to come out and bring in a Mitch Owens? I don't know, because even Nasai, late in the game yesterday, did some very exceptional things in his field kicking late, opened up the game for us. So I think he gets another game. So And you've got Zach Jones, Hunter Clark, Buildings to come back in the next two or three weeks. It's going to be very difficult for selection, but you know it's the best kind of headaches going into next week against Hawthorne. In terms of injuries, I know that a lot of Saners watch this video and would like me to cover the injury list a bit more so you can stay updated on who's coming in, who's coming out. Uh, this is based on what is on the current St Kilda website. I'm not sure if it's completely up to date, but at the moment they've got Jack Billings at hamstring listed with two to four weeks. Uh, Jack Bytel conditioning TBC, but he played VFL yesterday, so I'd say he's up for selection. Hunter Clark, shoulder, four to six weeks. I think that's probably going to be honed in because I think he's he's running, he's training a bit more now. Caulfield, obviously, after the season. Dan Hanabry, TBC, going to have surgery in his calf. Zach Jones, personal leave, indefinite, but I think he's training. So sneaky chance maybe for the next couple of weeks, depending on how he's feeling. And obviously, Paddy Ryder, Achilles Soreness, available, played on the weekend, really helped support um, Rowan Marshall. And it was interesting to see Ro, Paddy, and Jack Hayes combine. And I thought it actually worked really well. So we'll see if we can do that most weeks. But against Richmond, it worked a treat. Now, the AFLW season for the Saners has been done for you know, a couple of weeks now. Uh, but the All-Australian squad was, was announced. So uh, it was great to see... Um, Tilly Lucas Rod, uh, her standout season was rewarded with uh, her maiden selection in the All Australian uh, squad. Um, you know, she moved from from defence to the midfield. I think that might have been due to a couple of the the players that were missing in the midfield this year. Um, and yeah, she she had a great season. Um, she placed inside the competition's top ten for total contested possessions, fourth overall tackles, fifth clearances, ninth, and disposals, tenth. Um, so that's excellent considering we only won a couple of games and um, were struggling in the midfield department. So great to see her get rewarded for her great season. Um, and on top of that, um, we've got Tani White, um, who secured her first AFL PA 22 under 22 selection. I thought she had a just a genuinely yeah, very good season for her. I thought she was a rock down back. Um, she was averaging a career best 13 possessions and 7 tackles per game, Jack Steele levels, you know, um, and just was, was an excellent player for us all season, uh, especially in some of those games we were under under a lot of pressure, and I thought there were a lot of times where she she put her body on the line, flew, fly with, you know, flew with the ball, and, uh, and really, you know, put her body on the line so many times where I thought, geez, how is she going to get up from this? And she did, so she's as tough as they come in our team. Um, and yeah, it's great to see a couple of a couple of Saners get rewarded for their great seasons. Now for the questions, bit of a quick one this week, Saners. Uh, there's not much news outside of the club, so it's been uh, been really good to to just kind of talk about the on-field success of the club. Memberships is growing as well. I think we want to hit sixty thousand this year. So if you haven't signed up, definitely sign up. Uh, let's look at some of these Saints TV weekly questions. Zave De Silva says, do you think this is the most solid our backline has looked since 0910? That's a huge call. But considering since 2010-11, we haven't really had a stable backline. I'd say this is definitely um, probably the most confident I've been in our backline in a while. Battle's been really good down there, but you can't forget someone like Jared Lynott, who actually had a really good game yesterday. Plays a bit like Cal Wilkie. He's just very reliable. Um, and Cal Wilkie himself had a really good game. And then Patton's back doing his job. Jimmy Webster's back doing his job. Brad Hill running off halfback with Sinclair. Nassai Wangani Malira can do it as well. Um, yeah, really, really happy with the back line. Best since 2009-10? Um, Probably. Uh, Nick says, how good is it to see the boys play good footy under the roof? Mate, it's awesome. You know, it's been a while since we've played that way under the roof. We've struggled a little bit of late. Um at Marvel Stadium, so it was really good to see us get reward for effort yesterday. And the first half, I thought we played all right. The first quarter, we played fast and it paid off, but Richmond also kicked some easy goals as well. 
and then we kind of tightened up defensively and then from then on it was all one way traffic red white and black so it was a great performance great to be at the footy around Sainers and and to see Max King do do that against um, some quality opponents is, is amazing um, Brock is asking when Jones is fit who's he replacing in our midfield like ingression sinks pace as is I don't think he really needs to replace. I think it just adds more rotations. It even allows you to put Jack Steele in the forward line, rest for five, ten minutes a quarter, put Jones in with Gresh and Sinks, and that's a seriously dynamic, um, couldn't even say the word there, seriously dynamic um, center uh, trio there with, with Paddy and Rowe in the ruck. So I don't think you really need to replace anyone. I think it just adds more rotations and uh, just means you get more legs into the midfield and it's not just Steely and, and Seb and Crouchy carrying the thing and I didn't even mention Crouchy in there he can go in there as well obviously after a great performance yesterday any changes for next week that's from Kai at this stage probably not I mean Jack Higgins will come out but Ben Long was the emergency so I think he probably keeps his spot uh, with Dan Butler in the forward line and then the emergency next week could be someone like a Mitch Owens or Cooper Sharman if he's cork he's alright so yeah no I don't think there'll be too many changes which is which is good a nice stable team um Bryn is asking, do you think King was told to hold back so he could come through in the final quarter? I don't think so, Bryn. I think uh, King, he's just found his his uh, mojo in that quarter and um, we just started kicking it to him in space and he wasn't getting double teamed. And Grimes did go down, I believe. Dylan Grimes, the Richmond defender. And that did help because I think Kingy was on Gibkus for a lot of the time. So Kingy versus a first year you know, defender in his basically his third game. I think you know, you're always going to favor Max King in that situation. Uh, and lastly, uh, Spagger is asked, can we buy grand final tickets yet? <laughs> Mate, if we, uh, if we go on a bit of a run, who knows what can happen. But momentum's a funny thing in footy. And we saw yesterday, we had the momentum in the third and Richmond couldn't get it back. And, and the game was way out of their reach like that. So um, hopefully we continue that momentum. It's a big game this week against Hawthorne, who actually worked their way back into the game yesterday against Carlton. Um, but it's at the MCG and I really enjoy the way we play the G. I think it'll suit us. Um, and it's a very winnable game as well. So I can't wait to, to get to the gym, watch the boys again. Um, yeah, that's it, guys. That's the that's the uh, Saints TV Weekly for this week. Thank you for your questions and for tuning in. As I mentioned at the top of the show, Player Ratings is now out on YouTube, as well as my full match review right after the game. Good 30-minute review there if you want to go on the YouTube channel and watch that. Um, and if you're watching this and you're a Saint and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit subscribe and join Saints TV on YouTube. It's growing every day and I really appreciate all the support that you guys provide me. Um, the podcast, we're doing it early this week, just with some personal things going on. We're going to do it early, so hopefully it should drop later today, if not early tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that um, and all of the rest of the content on the socials as well. But until then, guys, enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy the win. Watch the replay as many times as you can. And as always... Go you mighty sainers. See you guys.